So, here we go. Um, Terminator T800 kit. I bought this about 25 years ago, so it's been sitting in my stash for quite a while now. Oh, good 25 years. It's a resin bust, and I can't even remember if I've ever actually looked at it before. And it looks pretty good. It's hollow, so it's not a solid kit as you can see. Detail looks fantastic on there. This is an old school sculpture. Looks like it was done in clay. Hair detail is fantastic. Yeah, pretty happy with that. So, let's get stuck into it. Here I'm just uh, sanding off, uh, grinding off the uh, seams. Just smoothing it out a bit. Starting off with my Dremel tool. grit sandpaper to smooth it out just to make sure it all conforms and then move on to 400 grit which I'll make it even nicer and a good old Tamiya party because I've got some seams in there which are a bit a bit rough so it's partied up a bit with the knife and you can't go wrong with the old finger Now, I did uh, undercoat this off camera, but I probably should have stuck the base on uh, before I actually undercoated it. But it is what it is. So, what I want to do is cut off the edges, bring it in as close as I possibly can. Simply done with a hobby um, saw. I, I cut through halfway through the plastic and then just snap it off with those side cutters there. Sorry about the shaking, it's not my old hands. And once I've done that, back onto the Dremel tool. And we're just moving a little bit closer. It's actually not a Dremel tool, it's a, it's a cheap knockoff that I got off um, Bunnings, the hardware store. It was like $69. I do have a Dremel somewhere, I just couldn't find it. Roughly getting it to shape and a bit of a brush off and geez got to clean up that mess got old vac there magically disappears got my toenail file out and all i'm doing is just shaping it getting closer to the shape that i needed to do if the file kind of uh, gets clogged up with plastic i just use this wire brush and Going with the, the grain of the file, just uh, clean out all the plastic and then we've got a nice, nice sharp uh, file again. It's looking great. Again, a quick brush, probably use bigger brushes next time. And the vac again, I like a nice clean working space. And to me, a party, a bit of sanding once again. There he is. That's Arnie, ready for a base coat. I mean, you can see the base of it's looking really, really good. Shaped very nicely. And I'm just gonna stick, um, or rather hot stick it to a dowel. So just make it easy for me for handling when I'm actually painting it. Easy as that. And now for the base coat. I'm using Vallejo Skin Tone here. Now the first coat I did do, I mix it a bit too thin. So um, yeah, quick dry with the hair dry once again. Oh, actually the first time I'm using it in this process. And another spray. Now this time I've kind of thickened up the paint. Less thinner in it. You can see it's covering a, a, a lot more um, uniformly now. It's looking a bit peachy, so I need to get rid of that little um, pinky kind of feel to it. So what I'm going to do is do a mixture of um, two different types of paints. I'm going to start off with this uh, Vallejo transparent yellow and then move on to the transparent uh, red. Now doing it in sections at a time because it dries fairly quickly. I've 
kind of watered it down quite a fair bit and just using a makeup brush uh, rather a makeup sponge dab most of it off and all this, do this is doing just adding a bit more contour to it There's no precision work here, it's just slapping it on and wiping it off. And now I'm using the the transparent red. And this will give the, the skin tone a bit more warmth. Also again, in small, small sections at a time. If you leave it too long, it dries out pretty quickly and kind of leaves um, a bit of a stain. Oh, I swear that brush is possessed. Now I want to do the whole um, bust in a bit of a dusting of this barbarian flesh just to kind of unify all the different tones together. It's only a light, uh, a light dusting. Now I'm going to add some of the shadows to it. Using a combination of the Vallejo flesh and the red terracotta or terracotta. And I'm just going to uh, paint in within the recessed areas again just to add a bit more depth. Now I've done that using the Vallejo flesh I'm just going to dab it very lightly with a makeup sponge once again and just to add a bit of um, unevenness to the skin And the hairdryer once again you can see it's looking good now transparent red I'm just uh, flicking some uh, paint on there some of the transparent red just to give it some imperfections like uh, most skin uh, does you know little freckles and things like that and time to paint the hair and with the hair I'm going to uh, use a combination of that NATO brown and the flat black yeah, I'm starting off just doing around the edges here with a fine brush. We'll get in fairly close. And then we can move on to a bigger brush and fill in the areas. And now I'm using the NATO Brown and I'm just dry brushing the actual hair. The dry brushing technique is basically getting a whole bunch of gunk from the bottom of the jar, sticking it on a piece of paper and lightly dabbing it and uh, wiping most of it so you just have a really light uh, flick of the hair and just, that just highlights the raised areas and gives it a bit more, once again, a bit more depth to the hair. And I've gone to a bigger brush to cover the areas a bit better. You can see it's starting to come out now. Now for the eyes. Now I didn't want to use a white for the eyes so I used the, the Vallejo white grey with the fine brush and again quick dry that hair dry is super duper. Now I'm just using the pencil to mark off the areas that um, I want to paint the eyes and this will help me align them I'm just using the flat black with the fine brush and we're just going to paint in uh, the eyes. And you kind of got to take your time here because uh, this will make or break um, Arnie. Because if he looks cross eyed, it'll be a bit weird. Now I'm using uh, burnt flesh here for his lips. Now you've got to be careful, it's not too dark or, or else it's going to look like lipstick. And again, the burnt flesh underneath his nose, just to give a bit of, uh, again, a bit of uh, 3D depth to it, I suppose. And around his nose, just stabbing away with my finger, just to smoothing it out. Now 
underneath the eyelids and of course inside the ears Just making sure all the lips are nicely uh, shaped as well, with some shadowing. It's looking good. Probably had, you know, a couple of minor touch-ups here and there. But otherwise, shadowing is looking quite good. I need to do the chrome bits to expose um, uh, damaged areas. I'm using this new stuff from Green Stuff World. I've never used before, and um, the hobby shop actually recommended this stuff. And it's the first time I'm actually ever using it. I didn't even bother reading the instructions because I'm a bloke. We don't read instructions; we just get straight into it. I gotta admit, it's looking fantastic. It's really good the way the chrome's coming up. It's got this great shine to it. It looks so realistic. I, I, I actually couldn't believe how how well it came up. I did have to end up doing two coats. And you can see it's just, it's fantastic. It's so good. Now to add all the, um, the flesh areas using the red here and I'm just dabbing it around the areas doesn't have to be precise because it's been torn off so it needs to look a bit gnarly which it is well and truly you can see he's now really coming alive Hair dry once again, speed up the process. Now I want to do a base for him. I used a piece of software called Blender and I really created this um, this base uh, from scratch and I'd never used Blender before so this is the first 3D piece I ever created. So I was pretty chuffed with the way it turned out and created the nameplate and, and uh, so forth with it. Then moved it into the 3D program uh, that actually prints the stuff. This is uh, a tutor box and created these supports because uh, I need to print it and there's the final result. Came up pretty good. The back of it was slightly warped uh, and that was because of the way I had uh, organized the supports. It's a bit wonky, you can see it's a bit wonky but uh, I can file that down and fix it up. These are the bits that I want to use as a um, I don't know, a little base for Arnie to sit on rather than straight onto that um, plastic base that I created. And just snip away. I was so happy with the way this base turned out considering it was my first one I ever created. Oh. My very first 3D project. And that ended up being too big so I didn't end up using it. It was pretty easy to uh, knock that off. It took a bit of force but it, it did pop off. And that's the piece I ended up using for the, I suppose, what do you call it, separator. But I do need to paint the base. I, d I do like the look of it but I do need to paint the base. And um, once I, st I stick that down, uh, I gave it um, a coat of black, flat black. And I'm going to use the Tamiya Aluminium or rather gun metal and dry brush it again and you know really highlight it and you can see all the detail now popping from the base 
and a bit of uh, Sally's five minute erudite and just gonna stick uh, Arnie on that this five minute stuff gives me you know obviously a few minutes for it before it dries so I can align them make sure it's straight on the base there and uh, there he is my first figure in 20 years that I've uh, actually built and painted I suppose it's time onto the hero shots let's have a look what he looks like 